welcome back to this episode about arrays. An array is a special variable which can hold more than one value at a time. Arrays are very important in PHP because you will use them a lot, and I mean a lot. So let's say that you want to save all the cars that you've ever got. Based on the previous videos, the way you would have done that is let's create a variable, say cars1 is equal to BMW. Another variable is cars2 is equal to Audi. And I add a third car, which is car3, and let's set it equal to Mercedes. Right now, we only have three cars, but what if we had 100? Would you just create 100 variables? Or what if you have a large database and you want to loop through it and find a specific car? The best solution is to create an array. An array can hold many values under one single name and you can access the values by referring to an index number. To show you how an array actually works, let's look at this picture. Right now, you can see one gigantic box with small boxes inside of it. So seven is a small box, 11 is a small box, and so on. All the small boxes have a value, seven, 11, six, 55, 98, all these boxes are assigned to a key, which is also called an index. An index always starts with zero and goes up until the amount of values that you have stored inside of your array. An array always has a lower bound and upper bound, and this is basically the lowest index and the highest index. So the lowest index, the lower bound, is always equal to zero, and the upper bound depends on the amount of values you have inside of your array. So let's continue with our car example, and let's create an array. The way you initialize an array is simply by creating a variable, and we want to store more than one car, so we will call it cars, and set it equal to array, followed by a set of parentheses and a semicolon. Inside the parentheses, you want to add the car names, but you need to remember that you need to separate the values with a comma. So let's say our, that our first car is a BMW, comma, second one is an Audi, and the third one is a Mercedes. Like I've said before, BMW is assigned to zero, Audi is assigned to one, and Mercedes is assigned to two. But what if you just want to print out one name and not all three of them? This can be done with an echo. So let's say that we want to echo out cars followed by brackets because we want to specify the index number that we want to print. So let's say that we want to print out the Audi. BMW is zero, Audi is one. So let's put the one inside of it. Let's save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that the output is Audi. And if we change the one to two, the output will be Mercedes. And we, if we put on four, you can see that we get an error message because four doesn't exist. An array can have more than string values. You can add integers, string, floats. You can even add another array inside of your array. You can add booleans and so on. Let's create a new array. And let's say my car is equal to array followed by my car's name. So I have an Audi from 2015 and the amount of kilometers is 75,304. This is just a random number. Let's save it, refresh the browser and we still get an error. Let's change it to two and you can see that nothing's happening. And that's all right because right now we don't have an error. So let me introduce you to something new. Let's create a far underscore dump. A far dump is a function that displays structured information about one or more expressions that includes its type and value. Let's add parentheses and inside the far dump, let's add my car variable. So let's refresh the browser, zoom out a little bit. Let's also add one break. You can see that the output is something weird. And it basically says that we just created an array and inside our curly brackets, 
you have a key that always starts with zero, like I said. The value of zero is a string with the name Audi. And the same can be done with index number one, which is an integer of 2015. And with index two, which is a float to 75,304. The equal to greater than sign is an associative array. We will be discussing an associative array in the next episode. So to make the far dump a little bit more readable, we can replace it by something that we did a couple episodes back, which is called print underscore R. Let's save it. Refresh the browser and you can see that we just created something that is human readable. That's the biggest difference between print underscore R and far dump. So underneath our cars, let's create a new array and let's call it car2, set it equal to array, followed by a set of parentheses, and let's add three new cars inside of it. Let's say that the first car is a Volvo, the second one is a Chevy, and the last one is a Volkswagen. Right now, we created two arrays. There is a predefined function in PHP that lets you merge these two arrays. This can be pretty handy if you work on a complex application and later on you created a new array and you just want to merge the two information together. What we can do beneath our my car array, or let's add cars2 to make it more readable right here. We can use a function that we want to say that we want to add cars2 information inside cars1. So let's say cars is equal to array underscore merge followed by a set of parentheses. And what we want to do is basically say that we have our first array, which is cars, and we want to add the information of cars two inside of it. Let's save it. Let's far dump cars again. Let's refresh. Let me add a break real quick. Let's echo out a break. Let's save it. And let's also ch change far dump to print R. So what we just did is we already had our first array, the BMW, Audi, Mercedes, which are in cars. And we merged our cars too, which has a Volvo, a Chevy and a Volkswagen into one array. This was it for this episode. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.